Let's talk about basic arithmetic with Maple. Maple can function as a calculator. If you launch Maple, and it's in worksheet mode, you'll have these little prompts here. And it's really simple. If you wanted to add 54 and 3 together, well, you just type in 54 plus 3. The only thing you have to remember is that you would include a semicolon at the end. When you hit enter, Maple says that the answer is 57, and it gives you what's called a line number, and we'll talk about those later. If you want to subtract, well, you can take 54 minus 3, and hit any, uh, semicolon, hit enter, and it tells you 51. If you want to multiply, well, by now I bet most of you know that to do multiplication on the computer you use star. So 54 star 3 would give me the product 162. And to do division, you'd use slash. 54 divided by 3 is that. 18. Now what happens if you ever forget one of these things? Suppose you were to type in 54 divided by 3 and forget the semicolon. Don't worry, you'll get an error message. Maple says that you've that it's inserted a missing semicolon at the end of the statement and it runs it for you. Whenever you get a warning, don't worry about it. If you click on the warning, Maple will send you to a help page on the web that will teach you all about what's going on here. For example, this is all about the missing semicolon at the end of a statement and it tells you things that you can do to fix it. If this happens to you, no problem. Just go back to the line that caused the error, put the semicolon back in, and hit enter again and it will work just fine. Now, one of the useful things in Maple is that if you forget some of the syntax, something as simple as the star or the slash, there are ways to recover this information. One of the useful ones for us is going to be over here called the expressions palette. Now, first thing you should do if it's not there already is left click on it and drag it up to the very, very top and then click on the little triangle to open it up. And what you're going to find is a bunch of different symbols here. These are going to be symbols that we're going to use a lot in this class. So for example, if you ever forgot how to multiply in Maple, but you remember that dot is the symbol in a math class, then I can click on this, and it will give me a template, a format for doing A times B. So if I wanted to do the 54 times 3 again, I can fill in the blanks and get the number right there. For example, what if we wanted to get the square root of 54, but we didn't know what the command is? Well, there, there it is. There's the symbol for square root. If I click on that, then I find that the maple command for square root is squirt, S-Q-R-T. I type in 54, and maple tells me that the square root of 54 is 3 square root of 6. Maple will always, always, always give you exact values when it can. Of course, 3 root 6 might not be terribly useful to me, so there are a couple of ways of getting around this. One of the ways to get around this is to rerun this command, but instead of writing square root of 54, write the square root of 54.0. If you put a decimal number in, then Maple will always give you a decimal number out. So 7.3484, roughly. Let me take that decimal point out and rerun the command. So the square root of 54 is 3 root 6. Another way of doing this is to take this whole line right here and to write eval f in front and behind it in parentheses. The eval f stands for evaluate as a floating point number, as a decimal. And if I rerun this command right here, I again get the same output that I had before. What's nice about the eval f command is suppose you wanted to have this accurate to 20 significant figures. You're in some kind of crazy engineering class. If I go after the word eval, but before the parentheses and put bracket 20, bracket and rerun the command, then I'll have this to 20 significant figures. And if you're really nuts and need it to 200 significant figures, there it is. One last little tidbit is Maple is very, very good at trig. If you wanted to work out what the sine of, say, 1.2 radians is, type in sine of 1.2, and Maple will tell me, oh, I forgot the semicolon. If you want to work out what the sine of pi over 2 is, that's going to be a little bit trickier. If you type in sine of pi over 2, like this, and rerun the command, Maple will spit it back out to you, which is an irritation. And the reason why is that Maple needs the word pi to begin with a capital P. So semicolons and capital pi's are two things to keep in mind. If I run the sine of pi over 2, then I find out that it's 1. If I run the sine of pi over 6, then I find out, oops, let's rerun that, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half and suddenly Maple is as good as any trig student. So there's the very, very basics.